Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Jai Shri Chavaji. Today we shall continue to see the part 16 of the book Rich Dad Poor Dad written by Robert Kiyosaki. Continuation of chapter 5, lesson 5, the rich invent money. And I have seen people pull a great opportunity card, read it out loud and have no idea that it is a great opportunity. They have the money, the time is right, they have the card, but they can't see the opportunity staring them in the face. They fail to see how it fits into the financial plan for escaping the rat race. And I know more people like that than all the others combined. Most people have an opportunity of a lifetime flash right in front of them and they fail to see it. A year later, they find out about it after everyone else got rich. Financial intelligence is simply having more options. If the opportunities aren't coming your way, what else can you do to improve your financial position? And if an opportunity lands in your lap and you have no money and the bank won't talk to you, what else can you do to get the opportunity to work in your favor? If your hunch is wrong, and what you have been counting on doesn't happen, how can you turn a lemon into millions? That is financial intelligence. It is not so much what happens, but how many different financial solutions you can think of to turn a lemon into millions. It is how creative you are in solving financial problems. Most people only know one solution, work hard, save and borrow. So why do you want to increase your financial intelligence? Because you want to be the kind of person who creates your own luck. You take whatever happens and make it better. Few people realize that luck is created just as money is. If you want to be luckier and create money instead of working hard, then your financial intelligence is important. If you are the kind of person who is waiting for the right thing to happen, you might wait for a, a long time. It's like waiting for all the traffic lights to be green for 5 miles before you will start the trip. As young boys, Mike and I were constantly told by my rich dad that money is not real. Rich dad occasionally reminded us of how close we came to the secret of money on that first day we got together and began making money out of plaster of Paris. The poor and the middle class work for money, he would say. The rich make money. The more real you think money is, the harder you will work for it. If you can grasp the idea that money is not real, you will grow richer faster. What is it was a question Mike and I often came back with. What is money if it is not real? What we agree it is, was all Rich Dad would say. The single most powerful asset we all have is our mind. If it is trained well, it can create enormous wealth seemingly instantaneously. An untrained mind can also ex create extreme poverty that can crush a family for generations. In the information age, money is increasing exponentially. A few individuals are getting ridiculously rich from nothing, just ideas and agreements. If you ask many people who trade stocks or other investments for a living, they see it done all the time. Often, millions can be made instantaneously from nothing. And by nothing, I mean no money was exchanged. It is done via agreement, a hand signal in a trading pit a blip on a trader's screen in Lipson from a trader's screen in Toronto and back to Lipson, a call to my broker to buy and a moment later to sell. Money did not change hands, agreement did. So why develop your financial genius? Only you can answer that. I can tell you why I have been developing this area of my intelligence. I do it because I want to make money fast. Not because I need to, but because I want to. It is a fascinating learning process. 
I develop my financial IQ because I want to participate in the fastest game and biggest game in the world. And in my own small way, I would like to be part of, a, part of this unprecedented evolution of humanity, the era where humans work poorly with their minds and not with their bodies. Besides, it is where the action is. It is what is happening. It's hip, it's scary and it's fun. That is why I invest in my financial intelligence, developing the most powerful asset I have. I want to be with people moving boldly forward. I do not want to be with those left behind. I will give you a simple example of creating money. In the early 1990s, the economy of Phoenix, Arizona was horrible. I was watching a TV show when a financial planner came on and began forecasting doom and gloom. His advice was to save money. Put $100 away every month, he said. In 40 years, you will be a multimillionaire. Well, putting money away every month is a sound idea. It is one option, the option most people subscribe to. The problem is this, it blinds the person to what is really going on. It causes them to miss major opportunities for much more significant growth of their money. The world is passing them by. As I said, the economy was terrible at that time. For investors, this is the perfect market condition. A chunk of my money was in the stock market and in apartment houses. I was short of cash because people were giving properties away I was buying. I was not saving money, I was investing. Kim and I had more than a million dollars in cash working in a market that was rising fast. It was the best opportunity to invest. The economy was terrible. I just could not pass up these small deals. Houses that were once $100,000 were now $75,000. But instead of shopping with local real estate agents, I began shopping at the bankruptcy attorney's office or the courthouse steps. In these shopping places, a $75,000 house could sometimes be bought for $20,000 or less. For $2,000, which was loaned to me from a friend for 90 days for $200, I gave an attorney a cashier's check as a down payment. While the acquisition was being processed, I ran an ad advertising a $75,000 house for only $60,000 and no money down. The phone rang hard and heavy. Prospective buyers were screened and once the property was legally mined, all the prospective buyers were allowed to look at the house. It was a feeding frenzy. The house sold in a few minutes. I asked for a $2,500 processing fee which they gladly handed over and the escrow and title company took over from there. I returned the $2,000 to my friend with an additional $200. He was happy, the home buyer was happy, the attorney was happy and I was happy. I had sold a house for $60,000 that cost me $20,000. The $40,000 was created from money in my asset column in the form of a promissory note from the buyer. Total working time, 5 hours. So now that you are on your way to becoming more financially literate and skilled at reading numbers, I will show you why this is an example of money being invented. During this depressed market, Kim and I were able to do 6 of these simple transactions in our spare time. While the bulk of our money was in larger properties and the stock market, we were able to create more than $1,900,000 in assets, notes at 10% interest in those 6 buy, create and sell transactions. That comes to approximately $19,000 a year income, much of it sheltered through our private corporation. Much of that $19,000 a year goes to pay for our company cars, gas, trips, insurance, dinners with clients and others, other things. By the time the government gets a chance to tax that income, 
it is being spent on legally allowed pre-tax expenses. This was a simple example of how money is invented, created and protected using financial intelligence. Ask yourself, how long would, would it take to save $119,000? Would the bank pay you 10% interest on your money? And the promissory note is good for 30 years. I hope they never pay me the $119,000. I have to pay a tax if they pay me the principal and besides $19,000 paid over 30 years is a little over $500,000 in income. I have people ask what happens if the person doesn't pay. That does happen and it's good news. That $60,000 home could be taken back and resold for $70,000 and another $2,500 collected as a loan processing fee. It would still be a zero down transaction in the mind of a new buyer and the process would go on. The first time I sold the house, I paid back the $2,000 so technically I have no money in the transaction. My return on investment ROI is infinity. It's an example of no money making a lot of money. In the second transaction, when resold, I would have put $2,000 in my pocket and re-extended the loan to 30 years. What would my ROI be if I got money? Sorry, what would my ROI be if I got paid money to make money? I do not know, but it sure beats saving $100 a month which actually starts out as $150 because it's after tax income for 40 years earning low interest. And again, you are taxed on the interest. That is not too intelligent. It may be safe, but it's not smart. It's not smart. A few years later, as the Phoenix real estate market strengthened, those houses we sold for $60,000 became worth $110,000. Foreclosure opportunities were still available but became rare. It cost a valuable asset my time to go out looking for them. Thousands of buyers were looking for the few available deals. The market had changed. It was time to move on and look for other opportunities to put in the asset column. You can't do that here. This is against the law. You are lying. I hear these comments much more often than can you show me how to do that? The math is simple. You do not need algebra or calculus. And the escrow company handles the legal transaction and the servicing of the payments. I have no roofs to fix or toilets to unplug because the owners do it. It's their house. Occasionally, someone does not pay. And that is wonderful because there are late fees or they move out and the property is sold again. The court system handles that. And it may not work in your area. The market conditions may be different, but the example illustrates how a simple financial process can create hundreds of thousands of dollars with little money and low risk. It is an example of money being only on agreement. Anyone with a high school education can do it. Yet most people won't. Most people listen to the standard advice of work hard and save money. For about 30 hours of work, approximately $190,000 was created in the asset column and no taxes were paid. Which one, sorry, which one sounds harder to you? Point number one, work hard, pay 50% in taxes, save what is left. Your savings then earn 5% which is also taxed. Or, point number two, take the time to develop your financial intelligence, harness the power of your brain and the asset column. If you use option or the point number one, be sure to factor in how much time it takes you to save $190,000. Time is one of your greatest assets. Now, you may understand why I silently shake my head when I hear parents say, my child is doing well in school and receiving a good education. It may be good, but is it adequate? I know the above investment strategy is a small one. It is used to illustrate 
how small can grow into big. Again, my success reflects the importance of a strong financial foundation which starts with a strong financial education. Okay all, let's end up for today. In the coming sessions, we shall try to know how much is a strong financial foundation important and how it starts with a strong financial education. Thank you for continuously listening to our recordings. Have a nice day.